All right, this is my 2009 BMW R1200RT, and I've got it sitting on carpet right now because I need to repair the kickstand. This <clears throat> screw slash bolt, whatever, broke, and... Uh, I jury rigged. I had to. I was getting ready to go on a, a thousand mile um, trip, and I didn't want that kickstand to drop down and get involved with my rear wheel. So I jury rigged it in right now. And now I'm going to go in and try to make a permanent repair. I'm going to take the bags and everything off the motorcycle to get it ready for laying on its side. I've got it on a carpet here so I can lay it down. And I've also emptied most of the fuel out of the fuel tank just by driving it. And uh, so hopefully when I lay it down on its side, I will not get any fuel dripping out. So I'll get it prepared and laid down now. Okay, now I'm going to very carefully as I can lay the bike over on its side so I can get to the center stand. I don't have a, a lift for the motorcycle, so this is going to work. And I've made sure that I'm standing on the same carpet that the motorcycle's on so that we won't slip out from underneath each other. Okay, bike is down. And the center stand is clear. Okay, you can see here that I went ahead and laid the motorcycle down a little bit lower here. Uh, it's still... Uh, you can see that it's resting on the cylinder cover there. And... Uh, then on the back. Next door neighbors mowing his lawn. That's wonderful. Cleaning out the bushes in an area that I've been wondering about a while. So on the back it is, there's a, a lot of weight bearing on this light here. So we want to be careful not to put any more weight on the motorcycle than it already has. So this is the one that broke and the uh, the bolt is still inside there. I tried to drill it out. That's as much as we could get. So I couldn't, I could not salvage this piece. You can see here, uh, just wouldn't come out. And it has three little O-rings on there. So this is the new piece that's going to replace that. And we have three O-rings. One, two, three in that pack, and I guess here we go again with, let's see if it's the number, or this is, maybe this is the number, there we go, ends in 134, yeah, so maybe, the actual part number for the other one is for uh, this piece is, is there. Okay. A new bolt. Again, keeping with the right part number. There it is. And that's the new bolt that's going to go in. All right. Um, that is my jury rig. That bolt does not belong there. I've got, the bolt goes through. It's a washer so it won't go through the the uh, fitting there, you'll see it later. And then on the back, there's two nuts tightened into each other so that the, the bolt is in there, but it's not tight and squeezing on the, uh, on the center stand. It worked, it's not a good idea. It, you can see that it's sloppy in there. Uh, it's, it's time to fix it and that's what we're doing now. So unlike the GS model or maybe other models of the uh, of a BMW motorcycle, 
this particular center stand does not, as far as I can see, uh, there's, there's no separate assembly that you can unbolt and remove from the motorcycle. This uh, kickstand mount is heavily involved with the swing arm uh, that's attached to the monoshock in the back and of course has your, diff your differential shaft in it. And that's just not something I was getting excited about uh, working on. So for disassembly, I am not going to worry about taking the spring off. Uh, that's going to come off once I take this bolt off and the bolt down here off. The, uh, the spring will, will give quite freely. And uh, so that's what I'm going to do now is take those two bolts off and uh, remove the center stand. Okay, so this is my jury rig. Uh, a pin bolt, whatever you call it here. So, uh, and it was two nuts jammed together. So, they're not jammed anymore. There goes one of them. Okay, when I take this one out, it should allow that spring to come undone down below. Or not, I'm okay if it doesn't. Okay, I had forgotten in order to get to the uh, to the other side of this center stand, I have to remove the exhaust system, not just the muffler, but the exhaust system. This is a T45 here on the muffler. Okay. So that mount is removed. Okay, this bolt here on the muffler is a 15. And it's just got a, a pressure clamp is what we're working with there. And once it's loose and the back of that muffler is loose, you can wiggle this little motor off. Okay, the muffler is off. Okay, the header pipe on the left, that's going to be a, uh, a 12 millimeter. I'm going to do that with a socket. It's kind of hard to get in there with a wrench. I'm using a 10, excuse me, I'm using a quarter inch drive, which makes it a little bit easier to get in there as well. I try not to get my head in the way. And I tend to loosen just a little bit on both sides before backing it off all the way. I'm going to do the same on the other side. Um, I'm not going to film it though. If it was a hard manifold, of course, we would use a a pattern to take it off but these pipes there's no problem with that so that's the mount for that okay once the uh, header pipes have been loosened up and backed off I'm going to come in here and loosen the the back uh, manifold this is a uh, 30 T30 to take this off Yeah, it's 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 a rubber. It's actually a rubber plug in there. It's almost off.
Okay. We've got a uh, sensor on the pipe. I'm not going to try to remove the whole thing. I just want to move it enough to get to the parts I'm trying to get to. And I think that's got it right there. So now we'll take a look and see. All right, to get in now, so you can see what I'm doing. I have uh, I've gone ahead and, and folded the uh, center stand up and this is a T50 just double checking T50 all right so it's in there fairly tight and I've got this uh, inch and a quarter box in wrench or combination wrench excuse me comes in handy as a little cheater bar okay okay So I put a pair of vice grips on the other side of the bush so that it won't spin. It's good that it spins. It's lubricated. It should. Video stopped for a bit there. Sorry about that. But you can see now that the center stand is off. I see how the spring connector happened unhooked it but it's as good as done and so the next step will be to knock out both of the inserts on both sides and then reassemble with the new parts okay as I'm going back together I'm using an Amsoil 2000 100% uh, high-performance lithium Hopefully it won't need to uh, be lubricated again for a long time. All right, the most fun of all, of course, is putting this spring back on the kickstand. And so I'm going to use, uh, this is, I don't know, maybe 3 8 or something cable. It's just something I had laying around. It's cable. Um, I've got it hooked on the spring here. The spring's already on its post up here. Standard claw hammer. So I might need a little friend here. A little bit more handy than it was a second ago. Okay, so this goes down into the bite of the claw. Claw goes deep there. Okay, I've got my bite. I think it's pretty good. And we'll slide to start there. Now this is when you wish you had maybe one more arm. Bite needs to be low because if you don't get it low enough, it's not going to be in the right position. Okay. All right. I hope you're able to see that. Table comes out, kickstand comes up. I'm going to lubricate my squeaky side stand before it has problems. Alright, so I have uh, 
So ma'am's all MP heavy duty metal protector lubricant. And uh, if you listen here for just a minute, not a good noise. So we're gonna give it a little shot. This stuff dries and sticks. It's good. Uh, something we use it for chains. Okay, that sounds a little better. Nice and slow, doesn't squeak. Oh, that's the, that's the spring, so we can fix that too. A little shot on there and a little shot on there. Okay, that's not what this is all about. All right, so we'll put it back together again. Uh, I won't bore you with, well, I'll go ahead and do it. If you want to watch it, you get to watch it. If not, don't. Okay, so we've got the uh, the new bushing here. That's wonderful. And we've got the new bushing there. And it is supposed to rotate inside there just like it's doing. A little bit of honesty for you because... I just have to be that way. I did a retreat. I don't like retreating, but I did. The uh, the bushing that was inside that metal housing, I don't know what it's made of, but I'm pretty good with a punch, and I was not able to coax it to come out. And so I made the decision to leave it there. I polished it with my trusty Dremel tool. And I took all the birds out, made it nice and clean on the inside. Uh, I, just from working with it with a punch, I had a, and again, I'm, I'm pretty good with a punch. Um, I decided that it was not going to go in with a hammer. It was going to have to be pressed into that position and I do not have the facilities or the tools to press that piece of steel into this housing that goes inside. So the, uh, the outer bushing is good, the bolt is replaced, the jury rig is gone, I lubricated both sides. Um, I'm happy with where I am. All right, so we're going to go uh, in a little bit in reverse fashion now. We've got the uh, exhaust manifold. I've got the four nuts that go on with a 12 millimeter socket. And we're going to put that on before we put, here we go, before we put this on. Um, and go just like that. So I will get it in place. I don't want to find out. I can't get it in there in a minute after I bolt up the uh, the headers. Okay, kid. Be nice. Okay, that would be another mistake. It has to go on just like in, in okay. so first this goes on. It has to go on first. Okay, that's on. Now headers in position and you want to make sure that they are in position without a bind okay remember no binders do I'm 
loosen this a little bit more. Okay, guys, let's go. Okay, probably most people have recognized it's typically a whole lot easier to take things apart than to just put them back together again. <laughs> so when they say put it back together the same way you took it apart, that does everybody pretty much disservice. So that hair is in, the nuts are loosely tightened. I'll dive under here and put the other two in. And put them on tight, tight, instead of under tight. I felt some moisture while I was down here, I went, oh no, and I looked real quick, I thought it was going to be a fuel leak, and I discovered it was my sweat. Uh, okay. Almost okay. All right, that's mostly hand tight, as tight as my hands can get it. That's good. And that's it. So now we can focus on this one back here. It's in good place, good position, which would be automatic if the headers are where they belong. Now we'll go back to the headers. I'm going to go long distance. A little bit there. A little bit more there. Wow. So much for finger tight. A little bit there, a little bit more here. You do not have to take off any of the fiberglass for this project, which is like almost amazing. Okay, those are tight. So the exhaust is on. We just have to. I might be sweating just a little bit. I got the garage door closed. There's no air conditioning in here, but if I had it open, you would be able to see this thing. The sun is too bright outside. There's on the camera and nothing can see it. The trick here is just pushing the right direction. There's a little curve in the, in the muffler pipe here. That's plenty tight enough there. Go back to the 15. 15. To join the muffler to the tail point. Okay. 
15. If you ever have to change a tire, you need a 15 millimeter. If you change the tire, the first thing you do is wait for the engine to cool down, the muffler anyway. You take this off, and this off, so you can take this off and then you can get to the lugs. You can take the lugs off without that, but you can't get the tire out. Nice quiet side stand now. Okay, it is time to clean up a little bit and stand the beast up. 530 pounds of beast. Okay, so I know that the uh, patterns are tight. I tighten them, check. The uh, center stand's nice and tight, check. The uh, exhaust pipe is snug. The muffler is snug in its two points. Um, springs on, everything's good. So I'm going to pick the motorcycle up. I pick it up from the right hand side, so I put that kickstand down so I don't get stuck over here. Okay, big mama, let's go. So the day I can't pick this up is the day I quit riding, right? Okay, I guess we'll drop the center stand. Ugh. See how it rocks back? Nice and gently, very good. Side stand up. Okay, in parting, I just thought I'd go over what I carry in my toolbox. Uh, tool pouch on my BMW is, of course, the uh, the oil filler tool. Can't see it there, can you? The oil filler tool. I've got a Phillips head screwdriver with a handle. It was it was there when I got it, um, so they work. They come in handy. Um, I don't know what. These go to yet? Uh, somebody can tell me. I mean, but it's there. Um, this fits the lugs on the tire, but it's too hard to use. But I leave it in there anyway. So I've got a uh, a fifty, a T fifty to take the rear wheel off, and I've got the T forty five. And I've got my assortment of torques. Definitely have my 15 millimeter wrench. And to drive the torques, I've got a ratchet and a short three inch extension. And that's what I make sure I've got with me when I go. I also throw a light bulb in just because they sell you two at a time and only put in one. Um, and then a spare screw that was in the tool pouch when I got it. And I don't know where it goes yet. I haven't seen it missing anywhere. So, yeah, you need to be able to take your tire off when riding because sometimes you can't get your machine picked up. But you can push it with a flat tire to a safe place, pull the rear tire off, rear wheel off, and take it somewhere and get it repaired and return and put it back on again. So... Just leaves options for you. I hope this uh, little video on repairing the center stand has helped somebody. And uh, maybe I'll put some more out as I go. Thank you.